here we go. Hi, welcome to Mental Health Monday. Once a month we gather here on the Heidi Gaiman Rights Facebook page and we do a little bit of discussion about different developmental theories. And Kim Markshausen has been our resident expert that joins us to banter about theories and then also to take that into a practical space in our lives and understand how God is doing his work in the way that we develop. And so today, Kim and I, we're gonna talk about personalities. And I wonder who out there, while people are kind of gathering, is interested in personality tests, personality development, understanding more of themselves. I think this is a space that our culture is really interested in the conversation. Um, And so we are gonna talk about different personality development tools and personality awareness tools, if you will. Uh, So if you are one of those uh, personality tool aficionados who likes to take all the different personality tests out there, or if you're someone who has a favorite way to understand your personality, maybe you can tell us about the different tools that you find useful in the comments. But Kim and I are going to settle into also a broader idea of how our personalities form, um, what good work God is doing in us in that, how they develop over time too. And then we'll also talk about how our personalities impact our sense of intimacy and our availability to connect and intimacy and all of that good stuff. So Kim, welcome. Oh, it's good to be here. I'm so glad we're not going to be talking, though, about those Facebook personality tests, like who's your favorite Disney princess? Because Wait, I'm a Ravenclaw in the House of Potter. Like, this is important information. No. All right, all right. I'm just too old for those things. <laughs> no, no, no. Never too old. And those things are fun. But as you and I discussed ahead of time, we want to make sure we dial back a little bit to get a broader view of how God is developing each of us. And so, Kim, our first question is, uh, what do we know about how our personality develops? Can you tell us a little bit more about what theorists share with us about where our development kind of starts, you know, nurture and nature and all that good stuff through where we're at now, no matter what age we are? Yeah, this is just a real tangled issue, isn't it? In terms of um, psychology, it's something we're really interested in. You know, what makes us who we are? What makes us react the way we react to things or like the things that we like? But we know so little about it Mm -hmm. at this point. I mean, there's some big theories out there, but it's all really, in terms of research, it's still really new. Mm -hmm. I think that's good to be honest about that is personality is a giant well. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, you know, we know maybe just the skimming off the top. And so while we talk about personality and any personality inventory you might take or something, understand that this is a huge topic. And because of the uh, recent developments in brain research and stuff, I think we understand more than ever that we only know a smidgen of what's out there to know about it. So, yeah, awesome. Well, and, you know, you mentioned the personality test. One of the things that, that becomes an issue is how, how do you define different words mm-hmm. regarding personality? And that's what makes research in personality such a challenge. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at the big five personalities, neuroticism, openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, those are the five that are really, where re- the research is really centering on. Mm-hmm. But still... You might describe agreeableness in a different way than I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. To measure that. Yeah, that is really true. And I think uh, I have never even heard of those five, you know. And and so I I think it's... I know. I think just like we want to be experts on every topic when we enter into a conversation about it, it's always okay to admit that even about ourselves and our own personality, we're always discovering more. And so when we enter into the theories, again, like we we know some of it, but then even when we talk about it on an individual basis, like we're still learning about who we are whether we know we're an extrovert or whether we know we're agreeable or whatever that means. Yeah. Well, and we have um, some inherent biases too that make it hard for us to maybe be honest about ourselves too. So there's a whole nother complication that if you're a researcher studying personality, um, is is that person's response really valid? (laughs) 
you know, because they might be seeing themselves in a, in a different way. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, we can't pull ourselves out of our head to look into our head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So who are the main theorists for personality research? And, and what do you know, Kim, about the, the basic idea of that? Well, when I studied personality in my degree program, one of the first people we looked at was Jerome Kagan. And he's, he's like 91 now. So that That's helps awesome. you to place when his research was happening, late 50s into the 60s and 70s. And he didn't really want to study personality. He wanted to study more how the environment impacts things. Mm-hmm. But I like this about him. His mother said to him, oh, Jerome, look at these families where there's one, one child in the family who's completely different than everyone else. You, you've got to study um, things right from the beginning. So I like the fact that he listened to his mom. <laughs> That's always nice, <laughs> he, right? <laughs> as moms ourselves, we like that. But he really looked at um, infants who were uh, highly reactive and then had a low reaction. Mm. And he was able to put put them into two groups in that regard, but also follow them for 18 years. Mm. So that, that makes it really a seminal study then. And he was able to show that if a child was highly reactive, they were um, kind of afraid of new things, that when they got to be 18, they were likely to be really introverted and would be seeking occupations where they could be working alone. So if they were going to be a lawyer, they'd be a tax lawyer instead of a criminal lawyer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he he saw that really strong connection. And then the other children were children who tended to be more extroverted. They were just really calm and interested in new things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It stays with you, indicated Mm -hmm. it's something we were probably born with. Mm, that I think it's really fascinating how um, I do think there is more to nature than we would like there to be. I think that we want everything to be nurture. And that sounds like what he was struggling with. Like he wanted it to be so environmental. And there's certainly those aspects of person in the environment. And especially when we talk about topics like uh, educational disadvantage and oppression and justice and all of that. At the same time, I think it makes us really uncomfortable that there's something about our nature that is somewhat static. Now, everything's possible with God and he's always changing things, you know, but at the same time and and growing us, if you will. But at the same time, we uh, I think just like our friend Kagan, like we want it to be less about that internal like reactivity or um, agreeableness or extroversion or whatever well I think personality really relates to us as parents too because we may not set out to create a particular personality be we but we understand how that impacts how our child behaves and interacts with others Mm -hmm. so it's hard to think oh this child might have been born this way oh yeah absolutely and I think we would have to give up some control if we admitted how much nature is involved even in like the person we marry or our friends, we want to believe that we can inherently change one another um, if we're gonna invest in a relationship, invest in intimacy, but instead taking the hand of control off is in admitting, I'm gonna need to love this person when they're messy. I'm gonna need to love these parts of this person that I don't just like a whole lot and wanna be with all the time. Um, And so I do think it's an act of grace to understand that while yes we're always growing and developing it's also okay that people are intrinsic in certain ways um, to who they are and and that's faithful to be a friend to be a spouse to be a loved one even in the good the bad and the ugly right and the other thing to remember too that is that between those two um, categories that Kagan came up with Mm -hmm. there's there's positives and negatives on both sides. Mm -hmm. So it's not like those infants who are highly reactive and would get upset over everything would grow up to have miserable lives. Mm -hmm. There's strengths in both. Mm -hmm. We we need both kinds of people Mm -hmm. to have a world. Yeah, I do highly favor personality tools, and it sounds like his research is this way too, that understand that we all have 
all of these different components and some are stronger in some of us than others. Um, and I think this fits with Freudian theory and the idea that we have the super ego and the id and all these things working inside of us to both put on the gas of who we are and move out there in the world, but also put the brakes on. Um, and, and so I think understanding that uh, we all have, I guess, all the all the DNA we need. We have all the things knit into us for growth, um, as well as huge mistakes and all of that gives us some grace so that it's not so fixed also that it's a painful process. Yeah. Well, those, those children that Kagan studied, um, it's not like they stayed exactly that same way for 18 years. Mm -hmm. So their families helped them to kind of moderate those behaviors. Mm -hmm. uh, the extroverted children would learn how to uh, be a little bit cautious and the cautious mm -hmm. learn to be a little bit braver. So there, mm -hmm. there's a role for us too. Yeah, I think part of the work of parenting is helping our children uncover who they are and gain self-awareness rather than always moderating or modifying who they are. And so there, there is a place for uh, modification, right, of all of us. We're all, we all have that old Adam tucked inside of us. At the same time, I think that we so often think we need to teach, teach, teach. And a lot of the work of parenting is that connection work, that intimacy work of unveiling who I am to you, you to me, and therefore we can understand more of ourselves so we can move in the world. I remember having a, a conversation like that with a parent who seemed to be unhappy that his daughter was really shy. Mm -hmm. And he was always kind of making excuses for her. And I sat down with him and said, you know, I have one at my house that I have to watch every second because if I take him to the park, he's going to be talking to the guy selling stuff out of his van. You know? Yeah. So there are benefits to being shy, <laughs> and you can help her to feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that this is a good part of her personality, too. Yeah. That plays into our second question, which is what is the space of unconsciousness and consciousness in our personality growth? So how do we help? And, and maybe you have some good tips related to this, Kim. How do we help kind of bring more to our consciousness about who we are as person um, and help our children do that as well and our friends and all our relationships? I think the best way that God put in place is our social interaction to do that because like I talked about before we can't get out of our head and see what's in there mm -hmm. we can see behaviors mirrored in other people mm -hmm. and so those social interactions are what teach um, children their self-regulation and that's related to personality so if I'm really uh, afraid to try new things but I'm around other kids who are trying new things and they're um, pushing back a little bit and saying, okay, Kim, come on, you can do this. And now I'm getting the message that my um, reticence to do that is mm -hmm. maybe not, I don't have to worry about that so much. You know, someone else can help me to be a little bit braver with that. Mm -hmm. And then I can be the one around who says, yeah, no, we shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, well, and I think I like how you're talking about how we regulate within connection. So we have that idea where there's a leader in the room. I don't always have to be the leader or there's not really a leader in this room. It's my turn to be the leader and going both with who we are as a person intrinsically, but then also being willing to step outside of our comfort zone in growth in our personality. You know, I think we see that really clearly. Uh, children do that naturally. And as adults, I think we tampen that a little bit and move towards, well, this is who I am, when we could be benefited by that childlike spirit of regulating within connection and really paying attention when we're like in conversation, in social connection, um, being in the moment uh, rather than uh, not paying attention, I guess, and going more with that unconscious version of ourselves. It's that two-step process of saying, okay, here's where I am. Now, where am I going to be in a little bit from now? Mm -hmm. So if we look again at, at that example of the father and his daughter, you know, I could teach him to say, well, she's feeling too shy to do something. Try this. Rub her back and mm -hmm. tell her it's okay to be cautious, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't ask you to do this if it weren't safe. So that's a, a short interaction mm -hmm. that is everything. We can do that with ourselves, 
too. Okay, mm -hmm. I have a tendency to overreact to these things. Mm -hmm. What can I do? Can I take mm -hmm. a deep breath mm -hmm. and try again? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That um, unconditional positive regard with ourself in order to say, hey, I see you, you're trying to grow here. And then also doing that for our children. Just you know, pointing out those little pieces when you see uh, the personality aspects come up and then helping them learn and helping ourselves learn how to move in them. I think that's really helpful. So then how does personality impact our ability to build intimate relationships then as we go forward? Yeah, because it's different when we're talking about a friendship or, um, or a marriage. You're not a parent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's not... Your Which is important to, to remember, maybe, work. sometimes. <laughs> I, I, I probably need a, a button that I wear that says, you're not a parent. Um, <laughs> I used to do that when I taught undergrads, too. I am not your mother. Mm, that's good. <laughs> that's good. You're not me as much as it was to them. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you're not going to necessarily help someone to grow into a relationship, but you can pay attention to how you react to them. And mm -hmm. you can also be reminding yourself that, you know those aspects about that person's personality that bother me? First of all, maybe I can change something to accommodate that. And second of all, I want to remember that there's a good side to that too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the psychoanalyst in me offers this question. What's in that? Whenever you feel someone rubbing against you personality wise, whenever you feel that popping up a little irritability based on someone's personality or the way they interact, asking yourself what's in that helps us to be able to dig into more of who we are and understanding ourselves. Uh, it also helps us to regulate and be able to respond in a reasonable way and, and to be able to set boundaries that we might need to set as well as be vulnerable when we need to be vulnerable. So what's in that is a very simple way to change the shape, I think, and offer a little bit more kindness because we understand ourselves a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. Because when we can get past that point, we can start to appreciate those things better too. Yeah, for both ourselves and other people. Yeah, definitely. So do you have any thoughts on when you are in a friendship or a marriage, when you're not parenting, these intimate relationships that we want to grow in, be fed by, and also offer some feeding to, uh, what do we do about the personality aspects of it? What do we do if we note that we're so different from the person um, and it's not just uh, gathering around that idea of, oh, we love all the same things and we're the same individual? Well, we can look at lots of friendships and marriages and we can see somewhere where you think, how can those two people be married? They're so <laughs> different, but they found their way to be together. And you can have others who are very much alike and then that becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think instead of looking at the, the different aspects of personality, because you talked about those um, personality surveys and stuff and how um, sometimes we can get stuck on that view of ourselves, and then we can say, well, there's nothing I can do about it. Mm -hmm. Well, our personality grows and changes, no mm -hmm. matter how far. It doesn't change by leaps and bounds, but it can change a little bit. So the more I interact with that person at any kind of level, the more likely we are to find a way for our personalities to work together. Mm -hmm. Something you would notice as a therapist is once we've reached a point of contempt, now we're not going to try to be working together anymore. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, an aspect of your personality I can't stand. You're an introvert, you never want to go anywhere and you have contempt for that, then then that marks the end. Mm -hmm. so look at each other and say, I like to go places, you don't. Let's talk about it, let's interact, let's find where we can meet. There's possibilities. Oh yeah, return to that place of positive regard even for the things that are different between us uh, in order to be able to have the conversations so that we can coexist in a good way. I think culturally, we see the clash of people and their opinions and their difficulty coexisting, if you will. And so I really appreciate that point of moving past the point of contempt for a specific kind of personality, a certain kind of way that that moves forward in a belief system or whatever stuff you see on social media and appreciating 
that person as a human being, that person's a value in having an opinion, their desire to try to express something, even if it's so far from the way that you would deal with the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. So then how does personality impact our faith development? How does personality impact the way we stand before God? Well, there's a lot to unpack there. Thank you very much. <laughs> what do you think? Um, <laughs> mm, ooh, turning it back in on us. Well, one thing I would say off the top is that God uh, creates us and values every personality in the way that I will never. Like, I like a personality that looks a little closer to mine because it makes sense to me. I have to remind myself all the time that God doesn't judge us based on our personalities. God, in fact, finds joy in every personality. Well, yes, he doesn't enjoy the parts of our personalities that might lead us towards sin. But at the same time, I think that he, there's value in all of it for him. If we, if we take a look at openness to experience, which is one of those big five, um, that, so on one side, it's being inventive and being curious. And I can see that as being a gift from God because it means I'm open to new experiences and new things he wants me to try. Mm -hmm. But I can also be so open that I leave myself away from my mm -hmm. faith. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at the other end of it, um, open it to openness to experience, then we're talking about con being consistent and cautious. Mm -hmm. Well, again, there's a benefit to that. I might stay consistent in this faith I'm comfortable with um, a church that I go to and, and what God teaches me in the Word, but I might be so cautious mm -hmm. that I don't use those skills mm -hmm. to help people. And that's the way I see faith development in terms of personality is when we're aware of those different aspects of the personality, we can be aware of how those aspects can help us mm -hmm. in relationship with God and with others and how it can lead us um, down a wrong direction. I, that is really helpful. I think about the Enneagram in particular as a personality tool and how it really talks about the law and gospel for each personality type. That's something really valuable that you're pointing out that we can utilize ourselves in any of the personality tools, asking yourself, what's the law and what's the gospel here for me? How can I connect with God? And how can I draw away from God within this personality structure that gives me a more understanding for myself? So that is really a helpful lens that uh, we are all going to grow in different ways towards God, and it'll be really easy for Satan to find the different things of our personality to poke at us about. And when we are more knowledgeable about that, when we dive into that personal work of understanding ourselves better, then we can better utilize the tools in our arsenal that God gives us, the sort of the spirit and the word and community and connection uh, in order to fight that spiritual battle too. That's real. I'm aware that I, I have a, a good sense of openness, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be careful about reading things about other faiths or listening to, you know, things that talk about that spirituality. I'm going to recognize, you know, I could fall prey to that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Otherwise, if I'm um, e extremely cautious, mm -hmm. then I, I might want to find more people to talk about my faith with within my faith structure so that I can feel braver about sharing it. Mm, that is really good. And I think that's one thing that makes like Bible studies so useful is that open place to have connection and conversation about who we are, what we're experiencing in life around the word so that we have some foundation, but also some bravery in that. And so that feeds both parts, you know, whether I'm the cautious person individual or whether I'm the more open individual, that's, that's awesome. Well, uh, we're about out of time. I just want to give the listener a shout out to tell us a little bit about your experiences in understanding your own personality. What has been helpful for you? What parts of your personality have helped you appreciate God perhaps a little bit more or been able to move in your relationships in strength and growth? Um, what parts of your personalities do you feel like inhibit you? Where are you trying to grow? We'd like to hear a little bit more from you. And so you can read about uh, both 
identity on HeidiGaiman.com and the blog last month. I think that's a really helpful component of this. And then we moved into this month on intimacy, which is what Kim and I were just tackling, is um, how our identities need our intimacy and all of that. Over at HeidiGaiman.com, Kim is also the author of Weary Caregiver, right? Is that the name of the title? Weary Joy. It but it her. is very caregivers. You are right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And I, it's funny because in my mind, as you were describing uh, the way we move in relationships that aren't parenting in particular, I thought of that unique place uh, that you talk about in the book of caregivers and those places when we're trying to give care to someone in our lives that rub up against us and teach us so much about ourselves, but then also the places that maybe help us to be good matches as a caregiver and help us to be able to be the best person that uh, God put for that person in that time and place and wrestling with those two things as we give care to someone. And I think the same is true for parenting. Often uh, when we interact with our children, there'll be so much joy, so much connection, and also some tension and rubbing up against one another. And so we would just encourage you in this today as you go out to discover more about yourself, discover more about who God made you to be and who he is also redeeming you to be. And then um, where those places of tension are, where those places are joy of joy are, so that you are always growing this day and every day. We'll see you next time. Bye, Kim. Bye.